Welcome back to Consider This. I'm Melissa Idris. With me, Sherrod Kutin. We're talking tonight about the Ta College University controversy. Now, on the show with us is Finance Minister Lim Guaning, as well as Datuk Yap Kwok Fong, the President of the Ta Shian Alumni Association, better known as TAA. I'd like to come back and address some of the uh, allegations that have been made about the budget, uh, the funding. Now, um, granted, allocations to Ta College University have been on the downtrend since budget 2015. I think even under BN, it was on the downtrend. But uh, apparently, it has been further reduced to just one million in budget 2020. Gwani, can you just address very quickly why there's been such a slash in the budget? Well, we have uh, emphasised that uh, this 30 million will be made available if uh, MCA relinquishes control. But since they have refused to relinquish control, then the funds will be made available still to the students and to the institutions for their benefit, but through a trust fund run by the alumni. So in effect, there is no difference. Uh, in fact, uh, the reverse is true. There will be an increase because apart from the amount that we have actually allocated, whether it's 5.5 million this year or 1 million next year, mm. you still get on top of that 30 million. Yeah, but ringgit. is the money, so how will the money be allocated and what basis, uh, Dr. Yab, you could explain to us, will the money be uh, uh, given out? Will it be essentially in scholarships? What about the, you know, operating costs of TAR? Will they get also money? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, as far as we're concerned, uh, we have brainstormed along the way how to use the money. In fact, uh, I just come back from a very important meeting. Uh, we want to structure ourselves, you know, so that uh, we always breach the concept of CAT. There's corporate governance, transparency, and accountability. And because of this, we have uh, formalized uh, uh, a committee, a working committee, to make sure the structure of the new trust fund deflect this CAT. Concept. And uh, on and you the usage of the fund, mm -hmm. yeah, I'll come back to you. Uh, on the usage of the fund, definitely in terms of scholarships and whatever expenses, you know, that di directly related to the student welfare, we'll take care of it. And you're having a conversation also with the current management of uh, Ta University College? Yeah, we have been, uh, we have uh, at least a first contact with the Ta UC uh, management. And so they're open to, to your ideas? Yeah, so far so good. They never say no. <laughs> so, Gwening, I just want to clarify the fact that the government has said, okay, you'll get the 30, um, 30 million ringgit if it goes through a, a trust fund. Is, is it because there is fear that the money will be used for political purposes if it's not given through a trust fund? We, we want to uh, practice what we preach. When we say that there should be adherence to the principle of separation between political parties and public funding. By giving it to a trust fund run by the Tarsin alumni, comprising of uh, distinguished uh, personalities who are not politicians, I think we fulfill that fundamental condition. At the same time, they will decide how it is to be used for the benefit of the students and for their welfare as well as for the benefit of the institution. Mm. Can I ask a very direct question? Are you Guanin's crony? Oh, that's a nice question. Uh, to, be very, to be very frank, uh, thanks to this controversial, you know, so I have a chance to, 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 to have some nice conversation with uh, <laughs> the minister. So when I look at him, I look at him as the minister, not DAP leaders, you know. And to be very frank, uh, uh, I myself, I even confess, you know, in the Chinese media, I am indeed a lifelong MCA member. You so are I don't a lifelong see anything. MCA member. Yes, yes, it's an open <laughs> card carrying. I, I, I call it an open secret. You know? Every, everybody knows, most of my friends know. The main thing I would like to stress here is being a member, I'm only an ordinary member. I do not have any, I'm not the office barrier of the MCA leaders, you know. So I guess it is normal. Okay, well, since Sharad has asked you a direct question and kind of cleared up some of the controversy or the allegations surrounding perhaps there's a cronyism element to this, I also have a question for Guaning. There's also been allegations that this could be a way for DAP to gain control of you know, what is a very prestigious Chinese community educational institution, um, even indirectly. So is this a way for DAP to take control of Ta UC? No. Uh, how can we take control of Ta UC when we have no interest whatsoever of being involved in the administration or the ownership? I think it should revert back to the community. 
because it is a community that funded Ta UC. And I think it is only right and proper that the community exercises control and ownership over Ta UC and not any political party. Well, I'm going to ask you, to the moment that you said in 2013, when the structure of uh, the governance structure of the, of, the, uh, of the institution was changed, and it became, you know, essentially privatized, and the MSCA dominated the, the governance structure, did, was, were voices raised? Was criticism raised at that point about how problematic this would be? Uh, yeah, I still remember, uh, uh, as the president of uh, Tashin Elomai, once, uh, I mean, once the government, you know, been changed, the government of the day, and uh, there is an announcement whereby the uh, grant, uh, supposed to be 30 million, uh, given to, normally, you know, given by the previous government to TAC, uh, TAC UC, uh, has been, I would say, cancelled. So, of course, as a responsible alumni association, immediately we contacted, we tried to get somebody that we know you know, and then we go and see a uh, minister. And uh, when, uh, when the minister pointed out uh, this uh, particular point, and uh, we were taken aback, you know. So, so you were not aware of it until that we point? Were, we do not know, frankly speaking, like most of the public, you know. Even right now, we try to explain to the public, a lot of them do not know. Because it's a very complicated structure, you mm. know, to us. And whatever explanation, you know, to me, or to our Touch and Alumni Association, we think the whole matter has been heavily politicized. And that is the reason why we supported separation of politics and education. It must be separated. That is the first point the TAA would like to you know, engage on. The second point is we want corporate governance, accountability and transparency, uh, in, transparency in the whole structure. When we came to know about the whole thing, actually we have formed a small uh, committee, committee consisting of our very experienced legal advisor and also uh, some prominent businessmen, and we go and investigate it. And it's not difficult, you know, uh, ROS and so on. When we got the info, we got the truth. And it's a shock that all the so-called the structure is somehow governed by, or controlled by, or managed by, you know, by single party. So Let's to us, that is not so right. <laughs> but uh, one very important point I would like to stress here is, that is a structure. But I must say one thing, Ta UC has been run by a team of professional, that is a management staff, the, 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 Jeez. Yeah, the, uh, the principal and so on, you know, they are very professional. They are very good people. And it is a very professionally run organization. Our issue here is the top part. Right, know? gentlemen, I want to yeah. come back and touch on that. Let's elaborate on the impact of having a political, politically linked uh, tertiary education system right here on Consider This. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back in a couple of minutes.